Hi, it's uh, Dr. Clark here again, uh, looking at lab chart to do some uh, analysis and presentation graphics. Um, this lesson is all about uh, taking data from within uh, lab chart, uh, editing it in, a, in an external application for uh, presentation, publication, or putting in a report. Um, the data from within PowerLab itself is very nice, it's very good for analysis, but if you looked at that as a window, it doesn't look very pretty, it doesn't really uh, show off the data particularly well and certainly um, would need a lot of uh, fiddling, photoshopping, whatever, to make it look a little bit better. So a lot of people do just do a screen grab just by pressing Alt Print Screen on a computer, grabbing the screen, uh, cropping off some of the bits they don't want, and pasting that into, into PowerPoint. Unfortunately, that does generate fairly mucky pictures that aren't very easy to understand, that are very pixelated at screen resolution. So what we want to do is we want to make this into a into a, a drawing in, power, in PowerPoint. We're going to use PowerPoint to our editing and then we can then put this into a, a publication or a report. And this is uh, by far the, the best way of doing it and certainly the recommended way of doing it to get a good quality, uh, high quality picture. So what we need to do first is look at the data we want to present. And we've, I've, I've just decided here that I'm going to present the data from uh, these two traces. This is from the, um, the dynamic exercise protocol using uh, data that we've just derived using uh, the addition adding channels uh, tutorial uh, we've done previously. So this shows the uh, end tidal CO2 down the bottom and heart rate at the top. And we want to plot a little nice graph showing heart rate and, and end tidal CO2 as a, a two graph figure. So we, we look at this uh, on the screen and we decide that the area we want to uh, have in our graph is somewhere just before the onset of 100 watts and somewhere just after the 125 watts has started. So we can look at the time course of a 100 watts exercise and see how things change to show the graph. What we don't want, however, is some of the extraneous data we've got here. We've got some Borg readings. This is a um, ratings of, of how, how hard the uh, person was working. So these are, are Borg. So I can get rid of those. I can right click and choose delete comment and say yes, uh, delete that comment and say yes. I want to leave these two comments in because they're going to be useful uh, for scaling later. Um, I could just copy and paste from this window, but this is a little bit complicated getting the exact area you want to copy and paste. So I'm not going to. I'm going to use the zoom window. We've used previously the zoom window to do some analysis, but now we're going to use the zoom window uh, for doing some, some copying and pasting. So I'm going to select a much bigger area than I want, so well before the 100 watt onset and well after the 125 watt exertion onset, and go to the zoom window. Already you'll see actually that these data look a lot cleaner here than they did previously. Heart rate in BPM is now listed on the left, end tidal CO2 percent is now listed on the left. In chart view it's just BPM and percent. So already in, uh, in zoom view it's looking a little bit nicer, which is great. Uh, it saves a bit of work later on. Another reason for using the zoom window. So now we want to try and align ourselves so we get the right amount of data. This is 30 seconds, 60 seconds, so this is a uh, a minute from this 15 to 16 and each of these is 15 seconds so let's choose around 15 seconds before the start of um, of our exercise and let's choose to around 15 seconds after we can trim that off later anyway so we'll we'll select those those data there and it's automatically cropped and zoomed in which is great we then want to make sure that our scale is right so going up to the top here I can just drag the scale either way so the scale looks nice. I'm going to run that to 7% and down to 0% and there we've got that looking nice. We've got 100 and 125 watts. So that's brilliant. So this is the start and this is the end of this period of exercise and we've got it nicely, nicely showing there. So we're going to go edit, copy zoom view and then we're going to switch to PowerPoint and here's PowerPoint running in the background and we just click on the paste button or press Control v it pastes our data onto the screen very nicely here. Um, of course, it's extending beyond the realms of our page, and certainly if you put that into Word in its current size, it would be way too big. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so it fits onto this page. Makes it a bit more manageable. And then I'm going to zoom in so I can see the graph. OK. I can't edit this. If I double click on it, it brings up the picture tool. So it's essentially still a picture it's not anything I can edit at the moment. So to be able to edit this, I can right click and choose Edit Picture in PowerPoint. It'll ask me if I want to convert it to a drawing object. I say yes. It takes a few seconds. 
and then you'll see that it transforms it. There we are now. This is a drawing object within PowerPoint, and if you click on any of these objects, you can edit them. This is grouped at the moment, and you've probably used grouping in PowerPoint to keep things together. So it's rather annoying. If I want to edit anything, I have to keep clicking everywhere. So I'm going to click on the entire picture, use the right mouse button, and choose Group, Ungroup. And I'm going to do this a couple of times. So click again, Group. Ah, now it's done it, you see. If I click on here, each of these objects now is still part of a bigger picture. So we want to keep clicking until the whole thing is ungrouped. There we are. Now that's looking a lot more promising. Everything now has little white dots around it, indicating that each of these objects is a separate object. Okay. Now we can edit all of this. So let's just have a little look and see what we don't want. We don't want that. So we can click on that and we can delete it. We don't really want this point up here, so we can click on that and we can delete it. We may want the heart rate and the end tidal CO2 uh, to be slightly bigger, so we can select both of those and we can use PowerPoint to increase the font size. That's about right. So that's increased the, uh, the font size there. That looks nice. Um, I'm quite, quite pleased with that. We seem to have lost the zero of our end tidal CO2. That's not a problem. We can put one of those in in a second. And we seem to have gained a little negative next to this zero. Uh, of course, you can't have negative zero, so I'll delete that and just leave that as zero. So now this is looking a lot tidier um, already. Um, what we'll do, though, is we want to align the scale here so that the time scale is in a fashion that we understand. If you try and present these data, it would say 15, 15, 20, 15, 40. That doesn't make much sense. So why not have naught at 100 and then whatever 125 is? I suspect it'll be a, a 10 minute or 3 minute period. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, delete this little number 17 that we don't need. We're going to delete the little number 19 that we don't need and the little box that comes with it. And then we can select all of the numbers below this line, OK, and we can zoom in. So we're going to zoom in all the way over here. And we're going to align the 1520 or the 1500, we'll do the 1520, to line up with this line. So we just use the cursor key and we move it. You can see here we're pretty much lined up there, almost exactly lined up. So I'm going to just use the Alt button, which is, oh, no, I'm going to use the Control button, which is for small changes, and make sure that is lined up absolutely perfectly with there. And there we are. Now 1520 represents the start. I can then delete all this other nonsense that's sat over here. I can click on that, for instance. I can click on that and get rid of that. And this little box made out of lots of other little boxes. I can delete all of that. Don't want that. This is no longer 1500, and we've got some little extras over here, so we'll delete them. This is now minus 20. Yeah, it's 20 seconds before the start. So we can center that and put minus 20 next to that little, uh, that little one there. This is going to be 0. And again, we can center that over the line where we've uh, decided it's going to be. And there we are. This is going to be 20, so we can select and replace that with 20. And I'll do all the rest uh, and come back when I finish. OK, so we're back in PowerPoint, and now you can see that I have um, changed these all to 0, 20, 40, 68, etc. This is clearly seconds, so using our um, insert text box, we click in here and we go time brackets sec or S, up to you. I'm going to do time in seconds. Put that there, make them a little bit smaller so it uh, suits the, uh, the scale. And have another look. OK, we can move that into the centre. OK, so we've now got, still got this 100 volts, 100 watts, sorry, and 125 watts. So we can go in here and we can remove the 100 watts. And we can take it up the top, for instance. Because PowerPoint allows you to do lots of editing, we can rotate it round and go 
start of 100 watts, for instance. That makes a little bit more sense. And we can line that up with the little line here. We can go across to where the 25, 125 watts starts. And we can move that to the top as well. And we can rotate that around. And since we're interested only in the 100, this is the end of End of 100 watts. So now we've got a much better looking graph. I still don't uh, like all this uh, nonsense in the background, so you can just click on all of these little lines and you can delete them all one by one, or you can click on a large number of them and delete them all in one go, which is uh, often the uh, best way of doing it. Um, be careful you don't get too click happy, I think that's probably the right uh, word to use and delete stuff that you don't want to delete. Um, you have to be a little bit careful that you don't just go randomly deleting uh, important data. Um, it can be, uh, can be a little bit tight sometimes and you end up uh, clicking on the wrong thing and deleting everything. Uh, if you do that, just press undo and, and start again. So I think you can see here um, that you can turn your graphs into something that's uh, very presentable uh, very useful for your lab projects. So I'll just pause and come back in a few seconds once I've finished. Okay, so now we've edited, we've highlighted everything, and I can right-click now and group it all again. And now this is a scalable, very nice, clean drawing that can be uh, copied and pasted into Word or any other program and used as, a, as, a, as an image. And I think you'll find that that is a lot more uh, useful for presentation than, um, than when we had when we started.